Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This video will be the second part of the Volks IMS Engage SR1, the final construction and the painting. The first step is to take it all apart. I'm separating the parts into bags based on the color that they're going to be painted. Now that everything is taken apart, the next step is to find the pieces that will need seam filling. The left leg has a seam right down the middle of this music note, so that's something to take into consideration. I am planning to scribe it back in whenever it's time to paint. My screen's a little dim because I'm using Tamiya Light Curing Putty to fill the seams. It cures best under UV light, but the type of bulb I have in my lamp seems to work pretty well. This is some scribing tape that I bought from my local shop. I don't recommend this brand to be honest. It curls up and barely sticks to the surface, but if you rub it down hard enough, it's kind of usable. As far as tools, I'm using a Hasegawa scribing tool, Tamiya engraving blades, and my hobby knife. Once I'm satisfied with the scribing, I'm smoothing the edges a little with some thin cement. The seams on the shoulders are another problem area. I haven't started yet in this footage, but it took me a while to get these looking like I wanted them to after a lot of sanding work. There are also some nasty seams on the top where these raised areas are. I'm using a flat metal file to clean it up as best I could. I'm using gray Mr. Surfacer to prime the parts. Gray will help you see any problem areas and give a uniform surface to the paint. Once everything's dry, it's easy to see areas that I missed, so I'm going back over them to fix the seams. These are some parts from the knee joints that will need some filling. Now I'm ready to start painting the frame color, but the undersides of a lot of the armor pieces will be this color as well. I'm also going to paint the purple on these parts before the main color, so I'm going to mask it at the same time as the 
undersides of the armor. Now I'm priming all of the armor parts. I'm going to stick with gray primer for this entire build just because it's already mixed. Now that everything is primed, I'm inspecting the parts and fixing anything I missed. I also need to reprime when I'm done. This is the frame color, which is a mix of a dark gray and a metallic silver. These are the knee joints. In order to make sure the inner part was fully painted, I had to paint them first and then go back and build the outer parts, which I'll paint once the cement cures. I noticed a seam I missed that will be visible, so I'm fixing it with CA glue. You'll see a spray can on the desk in a second. That's a CA accelerator, or zip kicker, that cures it instantly so that I can sand it right away. This is the Fatima cockpit on the forehead. It has kind of a candy look, so I'm painting it with Gaia EX Silver, and then I'm going to go over it with clear purple. This is the only part on the kit that's this color, so I'm just mixing it in a little tin instead of a paint cup. These parts will need some details painted before the main purple color. I'm using this as a substitute for a Gaia Notes color that I can't get in the US. I'm mixing it with GX White to make the main armor color. Next up, I'm painting the eyes, starting with a white base so that the red color will pop. In painting, Gaia notes fluorescent red over the white. Still needs a little touch up, but looks pretty good. These areas need to be masked before painting the purple. I often use masking fluids instead of tape. Mr. Masking Saw Neo is kind of thick. Vallejo is kind of in the middle and Windsor and Newton is pretty liquid so it flows better into areas. I have a dedicated brush that's ruined because it's kind of rubbery now but it works for this purpose. This larger area is easier to mask with tape.
Next, I need to mask some of the parts like this shield that will be painted the main color on the other side. And this is the main armor color that I mixed already that you saw me using on the ankle detail. After painting gloss colors, I like to inspect the parts for any dust that might have gotten stuck in the paint. When I find any, I use polishing cloths and compounds to remove it or repaint if necessary. Once all the dust is gone, I'm spraying over the main color with Mr. Color White Pearl. It's a subtle effect, kind of hard to see in the video, but in person it's way more noticeable. Next up is some more masking to paint the dark areas on the shield, shoulders, and this piece that will be painted the same color as the shield tips. You might also notice that I have three alligator clips on the shield. This is because it only has a few small pegs to attach clips to and it's not very stable with just one clip. So I tape three together and it works pretty well.
music notes on the left shoulder and the leg need to be painted black. To do this, I'm going to use enamel paint. I started with a little too much paint and when I tried to clean it up, I ended up wiping most of it off, except for what was in the recesses. This actually made it easier to fill in the inside areas, so it worked out in the end. Since it worked well for the shoulder, I ended up doing the same thing for the leg. There's nowhere to clip the sword to paint it in one go, so I've wrapped tape around the hilt so that the clips won't leave a mark on it. I'm painting the blade first, and then the hilt. The neck pieces need to be cemented before the seam that's on the back of the neck can be fixed. The shoulder emblem is gold in the center, so I'm going to paint it along with the sword hilt, but I need to mask the area around it first. Like I did for the hilt, I'm wrapping some extra tape around the blade so that the clips don't leave dents in it while I paint the gold on the hilt. and filling in the extra space around this emblem. This is the gold that the manual calls out for these parts, which I already have, but I also have this extra gold pre-thinned from when I painted the Knight of Gold, so I'm going to use it instead. It's Mr. Color Red Gold. Now I'm masking the shield to paint the purple areas. I'm going to airbrush the music note on the shield, so I'll need to mask that next. All done. I've removed the tape around the middle area because the center of this emblem needs to be masked off to be painted black as well. Same goes for the shoulder emblem.
I've removed the tape from the center again to make another mask for the yellow color. The shoulder I'll be hand painting. Shield is ready to go. For the shoulder, I'm mixing these two enamel colors to match C58. Put a drop of the Mr. Color in for comparison, then a little orange, and then I'm adding a little yellow until it matches up. And I'm just eyeballing it. The advantage of using enamel over lacquers is you can erase mistakes to make clean edges without affecting the paint underneath, which is what I'm doing here. I tried to mask and paint the black border around the gold emblem, but it didn't work well, so now I'm redoing it with black enamel by hand. Now that everything's painted, it's time to start the pen washes. For the lighter colors, I'm using Tamiya dark gray panel line wash, and for the darker colors, I'm using black. the excess with lighter fluid. If you look in the manual, some of these lines are pretty fine, and the wash didn't give me the result that I wanted. So I'm removing it in some areas and I'm going to repaint them with Vallejo acrylic paint and a fine brush. London Grey is a pretty good match for the Tamiya Dark Grey wash. Before I do the fine lines, I need to paint the border around this emblem. I'm going to use acrylic instead of enamel because if I mess it up, I can just scrape it off with a toothpick and the yellow enamel won't be affected. starting those fine lines.
much better. The insides of the shoulder vents need to be black as well, so I'm using acrylic for that. Gaia Notes EX03 EX Clear Gloss is my favorite gloss coat of all time. Now that I'm finished with the panel lines and everything, going to gloss all the parts. Some parts have some little specks of dust in the gloss coat, so I'm going to polish it out with Tamiya Compound. This is chrome enamel paint. I'm adding some detail to some of the parts that look like pistons just to break up all the solid color. These vents need to have a flat finish, so I'm going back to mask them and spray a flat top coat over them. These areas of the legs are kind of bland all in one color, so I'm going to add a couple of pop colors, but I need to do some masking for that. Ready to paint. This is after the top coat. It's simple, but it looks better in my opinion. And now for the stressful part, gluing all these parts that have been painted have to be extra careful not to get any cement on any painted surfaces so that I don't have to repaint them. 
It's pretty straightforward though, just take it slowly. This power cable on the neck fits in pretty tightly on the bottom, so it only really needs cement on the top part. Just a little cement keeps it in place. It's hard to see the eyes from anything but a low angle. I'd probably modify them to be a little lower if I were to build this again. The rectangle shape is the top of these cables. They don't require cement, so you can just snap them in place. I swapped sides because I wasn't sure if they were supposed to be on a specific leg.
I'm pushing the ankle peg into the poly cap here, which is taking a lot of effort and actually causing me physical pain. The hip joints, if you use the posable ones, also take a lot of effort to get into place. I was afraid I would break the pegs, but if you slowly wiggle them back and forth while applying pressure, they'll eventually pop in. I definitely recommend doing it with the skirt armor off. These shoulder parts have to be mounted in a specific way, so make sure you check the manual carefully. I recommend putting the top shoulder armor on after you have the arms in place. It seems to be easier to slide the arms on without them.
All finished. This was a fun kit to build. Very few seams, and the parts fit was fantastic. If this is the future of Volk's IMS kits, then I'm looking forward to more. Jun Chun, please. If you made it all the way through, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. And as always, thanks for watching.